Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and CJ here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we will be reviewing Total Nonstop Action Wrestling's Slammiversary 2024. And uh hey, uh Yeah, this this was a show <laughs> that happened. Yeah. Um so y'all listen to see if y'all agree with these things or not, alright? Cause a lot of stuff Y'all might get mad at us over. Just giving you for warning. So we start off, Matt Hardy, he came out, and I was like, I, I was already turned off when I saw Matt Hardy. Yep. So he's going against some dude, JDC. And I'm like, okay, and we're trying to figure this out. And he's formerly Dirty Dango. So he's now Johnny Dango Curtis. All right. It was a standard match. It was like what a hardcore match or something. No, it was a, it was a regular match. Just regular match, okay? So, because it, it was very standard, you know, Matt won with a super ace crusher. Then after the match, he was so angry he he did two more. You yeah, know? supposedly this supposedly Dango put his brother in the hospital and messed up his wife. So, I guess those two extra whatever's got it um got it leveled out. All everything square. Okay, well let me tell you something, Cedra. Okay. Mm -hmm. In a working way, let's say somebody, you know, you, you're my manager and somebody hurts you, right? Mm -hmm. That's just you alone. Mm -hmm. Now, if I, if I had, I'm, I'm, I'm the only child. If I had a brother and he's been through what Jeff Hardy's been through, I ain't worried too much about him. <laughs> you know, you can't do to him anything worse than he's already done to himself. So he's he, he going to be all right. That's true. That's true. So after the match, after what happened with you, I wouldn't just do two more twists of fate. You know, my finish would be a Northern Light Bomb anyway, or a Sleeper Choke. So I would put the Sleeper Choke on. I'm not going to let go. And you see me biting on his head or his ear or something. In a working way, it's going to look bad. The referee's going to have to reverse the decision. I'm not going to care about the decision. All I want to do is hurt this person. And, and bite his head. In a working way, and bite mm -hmm. his head. See, that makes sense. You That's can't be all fired up. You hurt my family, my teacher, and then <laughs> having the bells run. All right, I'm going to the back. The what about your teacher? <laughs> the idea is to mess somebody up so bad that the crowd gets concerned. Yes. And because you're the baby face, the crowd should be like, um, "Whoa!" They should get uncomfortable. And the writers or whomever can be like, okay, we can't do nothing with this dude's wife again. And save something like that for a big match. It's like, you know. Not an opening match. Yeah. Well, well, what I was getting at was if you're going to do something where the wife gets attacked again, save that for something big, something meaning, meaningful. Not just an opening match type thing, as you, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. But I was leaning towards the second time around. Has to be better than the first time. So, um, yeah, yeah, that was that was that was a thing. Yep. So next we get the TNA Tag Team Title Match: ABC, Chris Bay, and Ace Austin versus the Systems: Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers with Alicia Edwards. I wish I knew what I was. Uh, I know. I, I wish I knew what it truly was, but this didn't do it for us. It was a great standard tag team match that had the overly obvious end. Alicia stood where she didn't need to be for a very long time, and lo and behold, she got hit. Faces got a big move spree in. Austin got the pin. New champs. I'm not a fan of Bay. Because I think he's interchangeable with anybody. A hundred little dudes jumping off the ropes. Allegedly, and the new AEW guy, Hologram, some masked luchador guy. I hadn't seen him. What, what about him? I don't know. He was. I was listening to uh, Last and Cornette talk about him, and Last was like, "Man, he's doing everything that y'all the other luchas, luchadors are doing. He's small and lean, and yeah." If you if you watch a, 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 a if you watch a, a, a CML L show, it's, it's short and lean or robust ish. Yes. And 
doing lucha stuff. The more robust ones doing it, I like it. Yeah. You know, when they're big dudes in the CML, okay, I want to see what y'all are gonna do. Yeah. And then I'm not a fan of Eddie Edwards because since we started watching the little bit of TNA that we do, I, he just hasn't shown me anything. I don't uh, understand what all the. I'm not saying that there's hoopla, but I just I don't see it. His part is good. I see that. I saw that when he was back in NWA following Cardona, Cardona around. Outside and of that, double team moves. That ace dude uh, with the card, I like him. I think he's good. If 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 the if you could have left Bay and Eddie Edwards in the back, they could have been like, you know, folding clothes or something. That would have been a good match. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of a sp- sprees of uninterrupted double team moves that the ref don't put a count on, I mean, that's all that there is when it came to tag team. Making a tag, that's what they did. They didn't, they, they didn't necessarily, they weren't there for their partner like they should. You know, they was, you know, doing the duck down on the apron thing and let the people have the stage. And Ace is really good at fighting from underneath and, yeah. and, getting, and getting drug around. It's almost, it's almost as good as Ricky Morton or uh, Beretta. Beretta's as good as getting He's, he's so damn good at oh, that. It's like, just leave him alone, man. <laughs> um, but, yeah. They just don't do what expert tag teams would do. So, I'm like, how is this match really any important? Is it, a, is it an important title change? I mean, they both teams showed like they were intermediate tag teams. That's what and they looked like. It should have been a big thing because you're stripping that off the system. Yes. It should have went all out, and, and it shouldn't have been. And it shouldn't have been the second match of the night. Nope, it shouldn't. It should have been second to the last. So next we get Jake something versus Mike Santana. Uh, this is a really good match. Mm-hmm. Did like the opening diving spots, but when they finally stayed in the ring, it was a highlight reel. Most notable moments were, and I only put three of them: uh, the corner cannonball captured by Jake, ending in a dragon bomb for a two count. Mm-hmm. The second was Jake with an avalanche German suplex. And then uh, the third was, it was a wicked lariat by Santana that gained him the pinfall victory. Yeah, they were they put on a good match. Jake is, Jake is um, pretty much the Naomi of this company. He is going to win until. But every time he wrestles... He does some highlight reel stuff. Yes. And it's good. It's nice to see because he is a large dude. He's always doing something incredible. Always. If you've seen it before, it's still so a, a different size it's opponent. It's a rarity. Or, you know, the size matters. Even if they're small or large, Yeah, it's, it's, it's lot- rare to see someone like him wrestle. Large dudes. Who wrestle, but they don't wrestle like your typical large dude, which is you know, uh, Big Show and yeah. Kevin Nash. That's typical big dude wrestling. If you got a big dude who wrestles and is atypical, but they still a big dude wrestling, it's something to see. Especially now because the majority of wrestlers are slender guys, you know, hanging from the chandelier, <laughs> super kicking. That's that's the ultimate X match you just described. But they were good back in the day. AJ was so good. AJ, AJ Chris and Saban, Kazarian, Chris Saban. Yep. Oh man. Jay Lethal. That was a pleasure watching them matches. Um, it was some thought into that. <laughs> Next was a six man tag team match. NXT, no quarter catch group or something. Uh, some damn name that no one cared to pronounce clearly versus TNA's the Rascals. So they brought, they sent their jobbers in again Ooh. and the Rascals won. Yeah, the Rascals had one extra who apparently used to be a Rascal and wasn't a Rascal and now he's back in as a Rascal and had this very diaper-like diaper like gear on. You like a diaper. It like a diaper. You know, when kids have on diapers, they're high up on the hips, but then they bunch up at the crotch because, you know, legs closed. That's what it looked like. Like he had on a very flimsy diaper. 
And somebody didn't put any thought into that. Brian last mentioned to Cornette that TNA sent their best talent to NXT to wrestle. And I was like, you know, you damn dope. That's all I thought. You dope head. Just How does he know if he's not watching TNA? Exactly. Because what you would want to do is send your top mid guy, mid card guy, or your low main event guy to another company to represent, look good, come back. They might lose the final thing, but they look good most of the time. That's a win-win for a company. Mm -hmm. All right? But they send in their weak people over and Blast don't know shit. Nope. Not, 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 these, look, if I saw TN, if I saw NXT, and they was like, yeah, they're from TNA, and I'd be like, okay, this can't be their best, cause just the way it look, just the way they look, but, and then I would watch TNA to figure it out if they are, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, oh, no, they're not. It don't take much. I mean, we're reviewing it right now. Mm -hmm. So next to the street fight is the digital media title and the international title. AJ Francis has both versus PCO, and it's a double title match. So we skipped it. We're just bored of street fights. Rhino showed up. A lot of um, time passes, but Rhino shows up and a loud pop for ECW. He's still wide. Yep. PCO hit the big moonsault for a two count and pop, and and that popped the crowd. Not, and 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 it, it popped us too. Mm -hmm. uh, AJ pulled a. Full, fully undertake a power driver and pin for a two count. I mean, he did the tombstone, crossed the arms, and everything, splayed out, mm -hmm. tongue out. So that looked fake. That made it look fake to me. Mm -hmm. PCO chokes slams AJ into the chairs. AJ slides into a, into position mm -hmm. for another PCO moonsault and the victory. New champ. Yeah. So then we get the women's title match. Ash by Elegance, the woman, with Ash by Elegance, the guy, <laughs> versus Jordan Grace. <laughs> he's not Ash by Elegance. He's the concierge. I don't think what's he's his got name? a what's name. What's his name? What's his he name? He have a name. He don't have a name. Yes, he does. He's, he's yes, he does. The, who, the concierge. Who, who that, he came out. Who are you? He says, as far as you're concerned, Ash by Elegance. Elegance, <laughs> and that's what he said. He introduced himself as Ash by Elegance, <laughs> and until this bitch give himself a male name, he's gonna be Ash by Elegance. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Fuck him. So, very early on in the match, Ash by Elegance grabs Grace's leg to stop her, and and see that that was one of the outside the guy. And instead of the, the ref ejecting him right then and there, they had to wait for Rosemary to come in from the crowd and chase him off with a knife. Yeah. So Ash kicks out of the muscle buster, dubbed Shades of Samoa, which I thought which was a awesome. beautiful name. But she should not have kicked out. Nope. Not in a million. Ash kicked out of the avalanche suplex, rolled into a jackhammer. Uh-huh. Not yeah. a beautiful jackhammer, but look, look or Ash, Jaguar power slam. Ash by elegance looks weighs by as much as this oscillating fan that I'm looking at. So none of these moves look, that she kicked out of, I, she should not have kicked out of. I'm gonna just, I'm just. You, 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 some people are gonna get mad at me for saying this. Ash by elegance, the woman doesn't have enough ass to be kicking out of these moves. <laughs> All right. She just don't. And if any of you out there think that she has a non-flat ass, then you cannot ever argue with Cedra if nah. she body shames a booty. You can't. I don't body shame booties. Yes, you do. Booties. I just shut up, you criminal. You've shut already up. been found guilty uh, once. Would you shut up? I just point out that there isn't one there. Just like I can point out that there is one there, and you don't like that either. What? You said RVD had a booty, and I said, yeah. yeah. Younger Sting, I said, yeah. Yeah. Kurt Angle, uh, before whatever happened, I was like, yeah. Kurt had an awesome ass. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> so, 
Ash used the Canadian Destroyer as a transitional move. Ash hit a Super Shiranui for a, a, a slow follow-up for a two-count. Slice bread? Yeah. I, I like that. Grace won with Made in Japan for a pinfall. So, yeah. It's for the women's title. It's a title match. A lot of finishes can be kicked out of. I get that. And that's predominantly okay. It's just... I think it's messed up to use someone, uh, someone's current finisher <laughs> as a as a, a transitional mm-hmm. move. That's that's I, I I don't like that. You're gonna you're gonna pay homage, then you need to win with yeah, it. Yeah, break it out and win. You're gonna pay homage to Undertaker. You need to win with it. Damn, I wrote a lot for this. Okay. For what? The, the last next match. match. X Division belt, Mike Bailey versus Mustafa Ali. And what did I tell you when I saw this match coming up? I said, okay, Mike gonna win. Yeah. It it was Mike gonna win. That's what the man said. So Mike is in his home. This is after the match, but I wrote it in the beginning because I didn't know it until after the match. But Mike is in his hometown of Montreal, Canada. Mustafa is wearing a Heart Foundation color. Cedra had to know that. I saw it, but I was like, eh. You know, Chris Bay was wearing it, too. I didn't I didn't give a damn. As the match started to unfold, it all started to come together and in I my was mind. Like, and I was like, this sucks. Yeah, it made it, it, made it, 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 should, made it, it boring, it actually. It was embarrassing. <laughs> it made it boring, and then it got embarrassing. I'm sure you'll get to that later. Yep. Great opening with Mike showing martial skill and agility. Yeah. Not long after, all apl- uh, Ali applied a Gory Guerrero double arm ringer that, well, usually that's a submission finish. And this is early in the match. Very early, like still opening parts of the match. Um, the match is still virginal, basically. Then he transitioned that into a twisting Gordy complete shot. Never went for the pin. So he went from one finisher to another in the opening seconds of the match, basically, and never went for the pin. Bailey hit a shooting star for a two count. This is a needless spot here. Backflip double knee drop on the apron by Bailey, and then a kneeling foot jab from Ali. Now, why, why do the backflip land on your knees on the apron? On the apron. On the apron. He hit that apron and every ounce of shot. His body absorbed. You could see it. You could see it. There was no recoil. There was no rebound. All that impact. All that kinetic energy transferred right up his shins, through his knees, up his his femurs, to his pelvic girdle, up his spine. And by the time I'm done with this review of this match, you know, forgot about that move. And you probably, and I probably just reminded you that move even happened. Mm-hmm. It was so, I mean, in 10 years, why am I having spine trouble, Doc? I don't know, you dumbass. Really? (laughs) Let me rewind this for you. So I had to know that Mike was up and doing this uh, this move seconds after slamming his his knees on the apron. He should be ailing in the ring with his legs getting worked on. That's why the ring flexes people so that the bodies don't absorb all the impact. Yep. And in, when the in ring, Mexico, the the ring it might as well be a whole apron. If it doesn't flex, then the bodies absorb the impact. Repeated impacts cause damage. That's why these old school wrestlers have to have knees replaced and hips replaced and lose inches in height. Yep. There end of the lesson. Ali tried to pin Bailey a little later and, and, and had his feet on the very top rope, which was cool. But let me go back, because I wrote this afterwards. The reason I said he should have his legs worked on and that was a stupid spot, because it was what? Maybe 10 seconds later, Bailey was up on the top rope and then did the avalanche Spanish fly? 10 seconds. 
Was it even that? Five seconds. He was back on his feet. I was Spry. typing. I was typing um something. And I was like, what is he doing up there? I was like, wait, won't he just messed up on his knees? Yes. Great. So, it's the best of benefits of youth, but it sucks as far as storytelling is match. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I wrote, I like the overt cheat. And I'm glad the ref saw it. Because, you know, Ali had his feet on oh, the top oh, rope. On the top. Like Blatant. That, you can see that stretched out pink over your head. <laughs> Mike tried his finish. The shooting star double knee press, but Ali was standing and looking at him the whole time yeah. and countered with a high kick. But what, why'd you do it? You saw him standing there. You, you saw the truck coming. Why you try to walk across the street the last second? But that, that, that's why you're looking at Pearly Gates right now. <laughs> that's why you're looking at him. So Mike hit, uh, hit the move later and did a deep cover that places Ali's toe on the bottom rope. The ref counted three, but then he waved off the win. I thought that was good. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really good. We didn't know what happened. I was like, what? Huh? Yep. yep. And they replayed it. I was like, oh, oh man. I was, I, was so I was like, that was that was a bit genius right mm -hmm. there. That was a bit genius. Because that was mad hope and everyone popped. They was like, wait, wait, what? I was like, oh no. It's like Splooge on a title belt. It shouldn't have happened. Ew. So what? <laughs> so Ali, he fights back. Uh, pulling the ref in the way and he took the ref took a thrust kick the goons into the ring and, and they get taken out one by one then the manager hits Mike with the, the belt and then Ali hit the Scorpio splash twice because the goons were holding Mike Bailey in place the ref went to count and goon a goon pulls him out breaking the count so we're kind of like what, what's going on with this mm -hmm. and then the goon unveils himself as Trent Seven you <gasps> know to a good pop Hey, look, we were surprised. We were. Normally, we're like, okay, we know. But no, this didn't see, didn't see it coming. Seven drops people outside, and Ali drops seven with a chair. Ali hits Bailey with the chair and calls for something, for someone to come out. It's Earl Hebner. He comes out, and he can barely walk. He can barely walk. Note, they, the, the commentary team cite him as the heel ref from the Montreal screw job. Mm -hmm. And that, that soured everything. everything. I was like, ah, uh, that's when I realized the color tights that Ali had on. That's when it all came together for me in my mind. I said, oh man, why did they drag this man? That was, it was cringe, it was embarrassing, it was this. needless. So Ali applies the Scorpion death lock and Earl feigns to call it like back in the day. Ali is angry when he does it and eventually gets hit by a chair. Earl got hit by a chair. So Mike applies the scorpion hold to Ali, who visibly taps out. Mm -hmm. So Bret Hart did lose because Bret Hart was the heel. But he lost honestly this time. And does Earl Hebner, you know, did he redeem himself? No one cares. Nope. No one cares. Nobody remember that. Nobody's going to remember this. Even if I just said it. And people probably like, oh, okay. What? <laughs> no one's going to remember. So next we got the TNA world title match. Whoo. All right. So they gave the rules. No count out. No DQ. Win by pin or submission. Last man standing will be declared the champion. And I was like, my God. Goodness, they're doing this like my master of four title match. It's a very rare elimination match. Wrestling companies absolutely, positively abhor and detest elimination matches. If it's not a three or four way dance, then they're not satisfied. Yep. And, well, except I don't do the no DQ thing. That's not me. Mm -hmm. I, I got to have DQs. I just don't do count outs because, you know, if they count out the ring, the one that scored the victory like he was a knockout right there, mm -hmm. they stay out there with him. I'm like, get the ring, stupid. It's like, okay, you know, I, we got, I got to just take that off. <laughs> so the participants in order of entries, Joe Hendry, Kazarian, Josh Alexander, Steve Macklin, Nick Nemeth, and Moose. So I had to note, Moose theme begins with the Star Spangled Banner that 
blends into his theme. Moose comes out with USA themed robe and cowboy hat, and still he looks like a top guy. Mm-hmm. He looked good. It was a good entrance. Viable winners of this match. I wrote Josh Alexander and Nick Nemeth. How good am I? Mm-hmm. How good am I? So, note, not going through this like I could due to so many people, but I will mention a few notable spots and order of elimination. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go do that right now. So, ah, Macklin, he goes for a suplex but takes a spear from Moose to, who secures a pinfall. Fans sing na 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 and all that. Nya, 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 nya. So Macklin flips them off and they have the nerve to be upset. Mm-hmm. You can't do that to us. You take our denigration and do nothing back. I'll do what I want to do. You're all lowbrow, I tell you. <laughs> so Moose hit a superplex on, Ale- on Alexander, transitioned that into a powerbomb for a two count. Now, see, I didn't mind that because this was really good as it didn't look like a finishing level combo. It didn't. And I had to add, was this high level magic? Because it looked so plain. It did. Up on the, up on the second row, he just fell back with the suplex. It wasn't a long build up to get to the top and get him solidified. It does, there was no slow bring up into the vertical position and he didn't jump back. None of those frills were there. He could have been standing on the mat. Yeah. It, I thought that was a really good spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nimitz super kicked Kazarian off the stage through a table, laying him out for a while. So Joe Hendry entered the ring after Moose looked dominant. Hendry entered trying to look menacing, but he he just doesn't look menacing at all. He he don't. He's he's not menacing. Joe Hendry. No, Joe no, Hendry. No. no. He has. Uh, he looked like that. He like he like a ten year old that's pissed that he didn't get the ice cream that he wanted. And he wants to take out his dad, but he know he ain't big enough to do it. He has marred himself by being a comedy act. Yep. That's all. That's that's why I didn't put him up there. He's comic relief. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to build somebody as a top guy, or you want to talk like you're a top guy, like you're going to win a belt, you got to, you got to, you have to drop WWF Christian Cage. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Big car comedy act. Got to drop it. Comedians don't get the big belt. Nope. Look at Toriano. You don't get it. Mm-mm. So, uh, he hit an ace crusher for a two count and then controlled the match for a bit. Hendry uh, hit slamming ovation on Moose for a three count to a surprise and pop from the fans. Yeah, I was surprised. So, yeah, me too. So, new champ by default. Josh hit Hendry with a low blow kick, the butterfly power driver, and pin. Yep. And uh, the fans are angry, and commentary is just as stunned. Yeah. yeah. The fans chant bullshit. Cedra knows that it's not against the rules, so it's fair. Yeah. No DQ? How was the low blow wrong? Exactly. You, you know? Been low blowing the whole match if you wanted to. <laughs> yep. I'd, I'd have had it written on my arm. Guard your nuts. I, I rakes, foot stomps, ears, and everything. Every orifice, orifice you got, you better look out. <laughs> I would have wrote, look on my knuckles. <laughs> so, epic note, the match skips. Josh was atop of Hendry boasting his pen. And next, he's bleeding from the nose, blood on his forehead, and he's atop of Nick Nemeth. If anyone knows what happened, let in, us know. In between, yeah, because... This will sour me to TNA if this is on their end. The fans... Are highly displeased, and we don't even know what happened. Mm-mm. Nimeth, now it might have been, if it ain't if it's not TNA, maybe it's the uploader. Maybe Could something uploader. happened. Yeah, it's possible. Maybe the maybe it, maybe the uh, feed cut out for a while, and the uploader just took the 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 black part out. They did the best he could. Yeah, it could be. So if y'all know, let us know. Uh, so Nimeth hit a super kick on Josh, and pinned him. Kazarian enters and begins fighting Nick Nemeth. Kaz had had him in the chicken wing crossface and then started letting him go. Cedra, why are you freeing him? And why are you freeing him? Why are you freeing him, Frankie? <laughs> See, I remember you said that. I typed that. So you don't know what I'm writing over here. 
And he had him too. I'm like, because I'm like, please, go, go ahead. I, I, go ahead. He had him. He had him. Nemeth hit the leaping reverse complete shot in an ugly way, but he got the pin. So Nick Nemeth is the new TNA world champion. And I said it a while ago. I said, if there's going to be a new champion, it's going to be Nick Nemeth. I had a feeling it was going to be him because they've been on this jock every time we watch. I See, you learn from our days of watching HBO boxing. They were all over, man. His, his whole crotchal region is well satisfied. That, that's how I learned boxing had to be a work. And I, I don't like his use of the super kick. I'm tired. I'm tired of every kick that looks like it. Yep. Wait a minute. All the babyface champions come out and celebrate with Nick Nimith. So the order of elimination. So the, the order of entry. Then I'll go with elimination. But Joe Hendry, Kazarian, Josh Alexander, Steve Mack, and Nick Nimith, Moose. Okay. Joe Hendry came out first, but he was third eliminated. Kazarian came out second, but he was fifth. Josh Alexander came out third, but he was fourth. Steve Macklin came out fourth, but he's first, first. eliminated. Moose is sixth. He's second. And Nick Nimeth survives. So one, two, three, four, five, six. But then the order was three, five, four, one, and then two. So if that means anything to anybody out there, there you go. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's going to do it for the show uh, yeah. for Slammiversary. Jawbone one. Yeah, but you know what? Nick Nimitz looks good, though. And by and large, he can wrestle. He can wrestle. He just got little legs. Well, yeah. Not not like Ali Sadiq's, you know, cousin, but no, you know, he ain't got the little legs. Because, you he, know, he, most wrestlers have little legs, but they wear those boots. And so it masks uh-huh. how scrawny their lower legs are. And then you see you come out in show, shorts and sneakers. It's like, oh, man, I just you just changed how I feel about you. I book a T. <laughs> And Booker T was covered up, but then he took his boot off or something. I was like, bruh, where'd you go? Mm-hmm. Somebody get that man an air pump for his shins. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, but it, it was a show. It's starting to fall the way NWA did. And I'm like, I don't know about this. I don't know. So what do y'all think about this show? It was a show. It was a thing. And titles changed hands. Yep. It, a lot of titles change. I think all of them except for the one Alicia had. I think Alicia still got hers. Yeah. And Grace got hers. Yeah. So. The women that, kept their belts. Yep. So, look. That's going to do it for us for now. So, this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary. TNA Slammiversary 2024. And, look. We want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. So, we'll see you next time.